In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can use the Documents app to easily send product diagrams and product-specific data to our vendors when making a purchase order. But we're going to show some shortcuts to make that as easy as possible. So in our Documents application, under Configuration Settings, we have this product setting turned on, which allows us to centralize files attached to products. So when we attach a file to a product, it automatically goes into our documents application, into our products subcategory. And if you click on one of these, you'll see that there's a link to that product three for this specific product and other ones for the corresponding product. It's important to mention that there is not actually a related field. This is computed in real time. So if I go and look at the fields for this specific document, there's not going to be a many to one to a product. And that makes some things a little bit challenging because I can't link directly to the product, but we can get the product ID and we're going to use that to make our selection process a little quicker and easier. So with that being said, the next thing I'm going to do is go into studio here and I'm going to add a many to one field for a purchase order. And we're not going to use this per se, but we're going to use this so that we can easily create a smart button. So I'm going to select purchase order. And from here, what I can do is just make this invisible. I'm not going to use it, but there's going to be a link to the purchasing application, which will make our smart button creation uh, much easier. The next thing I'm going to do is back into studio. We have a resource ID, which I'm going to drag on. And this is going to tell us the ID of the resource that this relates to. So for ABC one document, it relates to product template one. And we're going to use that in our search fields as well. So I'll add that to our search bar. So I'm going to get resource ID and I'll add it as the first autocomplete field. So now that I have all of that set up, how I can use this is by going into purchase and going to create a new purchase order. I'll just say this is for vendor one and I'll add my couple of my products here and I'll save. I'm going to go into studio and I'm going to add a related field here to the product template ID so that I could use that later on. So I'm going to say related field product ID. It's going to say PID, so it can be small short field that we store or that we see. It takes a second to load. So now I have my product ID to the left here. The last thing I need to do is create a smart button to let us easily access all of the documents. And then we're going to tie it all together. So I'm going to click this button here to add a smart button. I'll say this is documents. I'll open up, I'll use the documents icon and down here we'll see purchase order document and that's because we created that many to one field on the documents um, application or model. So now we have zero documents related to this purchase order and that's fine. We don't really care about the actual number of documents related to a purchase order because we weren't going to use that field. So what I'm going to do is click more here and I'm going to make, well actually let's go back. Let's go back to that form view, click into documents. Actually from here, I'm going to click view and I'm going to go into the XML and make a small edit to the XML just uh, for visualization purposes. I don't want that stat info button. I don't care how many documents are there. So I'm just going to make a span uh, tag and say documents. And I'm going to remove this line here that calculates how many documents there are. That's related to a field that gets created when we create our smart button, but we don't necessarily need that, so I'll just remove it for now. So now what that's going to do is allow us to click into this documents app, have a nice button here that was created through Studio for the most part, and we just remove that extra line. So if I click into that, we're going to see all of our documents. 
Now, the reason why we don't see any documents is because that smart button automatically adds some context uh, when we generate it with Studio. So we need to remove that. And in order to remove that, we're going to look for a window action for this documents that we just created. So we'll search window actions and we need to make sure that we're in developer mode. So from here, I'm going to search for documents. And this should be the studio one we just created. And I'm just going to remove the context here. We need to have some curly brackets and we can remove our domain as well. So we'll just remove it completely. And now what we'll do is when we go into our purchasing app, we'll be able to go into documents. Now we see all of the files we have, right? And this is pretty helpful. So we usually probably won't order too many products from one vendor at a single time. We can probably remember what we're looking for. We can click into documents and we can find the documents that we need. But an easier way to do that would be to make this a pop-up window. It doesn't look the prettiest, but it's more functional. So to do that, we can go back to that window action and I'll search for documents. And this is the documents when we created because it has this studio external ID. We're going to say the target window is a new window. And now we're going to tie this all together. So I'm in purchasing, maybe an RFQ was automatically generated. What I need to do now is select the files I need in order to send them to my vendor. And this is where the documents app really comes into play. So I'm going to click on this button, which is going to have a pop-up. And we see that resource ID, right? And we have our resource IDs here is still visible. So what I can do, because we added the resource ID on the search bar, I'm going to search for the IDs that I need, one and two. I can select them and I'm going to say share. I can enter a name here or I can just generate a link and I can have a valid until. So maybe I say valid until the 20th copy and I'm going to say done and now I can log or, or send a note to my vendor and say here are our product files or I can pop this open I can use a template that says we're going to send the RFQ over send the PO over to our vendor and we can manually update this if we need so we don't have an email set here so I'll just say test and I can add something here that says, here are our files and have a link here, or put a link to a button. Maybe we add a button and we put the link here and we say files or download files. We can save that. Let's edit that, we made a mistake here. We want that to be here and this to say download file. So now they'll be able to download those files. Maybe we make that white. So now they'll have a link to the file and we can send that off to our vendor. And now you'll see that they'll be able to click into that, click download files, and they'll be able to download these files. I'm logged in here, so it looks a little bit messed up, but essentially they're going to get those files in a zip file. They can download them and they'll be able to see them. So I think that's uh, the easiest way to do that. Um, it would be nice if we can automatically send the context with the files down here with the IDs into documents that automatically searches and then has this pre-populated with the files we need. Uh, that would require a little bit of some more custom code. So I didn't want to go down this route. I was looking for something that's out of the box. And this is pretty handy. Um, and this will save you a lot of time when sending out files. And it's important to note that this documents app has that expiration date. So we can send out files, make sure that they expire at a certain time so that our vendors don't go back into our emails and find our old product drawings. They always get the fresh ones when we send this uh, download file link. If you have any questions, please let me know.